Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. I think that the new title of this podcast should actually just be, How Have They Not Made a Movie About This Guy Yet? You see, there are many heroes of the Civil War who got all the publicity. You know, Lincoln, Grant, Josie Wales, Daniel Day-Lewis. But I think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who pulled off a more daring maneuver than Robert Smalls. No relation to Biggie. He was a slave who pirated a Confederate ship and sailed to freedom and then got elected to Congress. Slave, pirate, congressman? Is there a more impressive business card title than that? I dare say not. Born in South Carolina in 1839, Robert Smalls was the son of a slave who worked as a housekeeper in the home of plantation owner John McKee, whose son Henry was believed to be Smalls' father. Smalls grew up playing with both black and white children on the McKee property, where he stayed in a tiny house with his mother. They treated Smalls favorably, and even once paid a fine on the boy's behalf when he violated the curfew for blacks by playing outside with the white kids past 7 p.m. But when Robert Smalls was about 9 or 10, his mother sent him to the plantation she'd worked at as a child to show him the harsh realities of slavery. According to the family, he acted as if he could do what the white children did, and that frightened her. She wanted to educate him about the whole issue of slavery to save his life. However, Smalls instead returned from the plantation, determined to escape the bonds of slavery. Fearing he'd face consequences for this attitude, his mother convinced McKee to rent him as a paid laborer in Charleston, where he learned everything about ships, even how to pilot them, as a crew member of the steamer vessel the CSS Planter. Several years later, at the age of 18, Smalls met a woman named Hannah Jones. He wanted to marry her, but she was an enslaved hotel worker with two children. He nevertheless got permission from her enslaver for the couple to marry and live together in an apartment. But Smalls knew that at any moment, her children could be sold to another master somewhere else. Smalls intended to purchase freedom for the couple and their children and managed to save $100. But the price was $800, an impossible sum. He had to make a plan for freedom. It was before dawn on May 13, 1862, that his chance came. Robert Smalls was aboard the planter, where he was forced to help transport four large guns and 200 pounds of ammunition between ports on Charleston Harbor during the Civil War. Smalls may have only been a deckhand, but thanks to his experience from years before, he could pilot the ship, and his plan was to do just that. Smalls got his chance because white officers and crew sometimes left the black crew members in charge of the ship while they slept in their homes offshore. This was against military orders, but the consensus at the time was that blacks weren't capable of performing acts like the one Smalls was planning. Nobody saw it coming. Smalls and his new crew of eight slipped the planter out of the harbor while the captain was away. I assume the immediate reaction of the Confederate captain was, in fact, You're killing me, Smalls! Robert and friends stopped to pick up their families at the North Atlantic Wharf, but the ship was noisy, so there was no way they could pass through undetected. Things thus had to look routine and normal in order for them to evade capture. Hannah Jones told her husband, It is a risk, dear, but you and I and our loved ones must be free. I will go. For where you die, I will die. Bad boys for life. No. Donning a captain's coat, Smalls heroically steered the ship through the dark waters, avoiding suspicion by correctly signaling at the heavily armed Confederate lookouts as he'd seen others do many times before. If that hadn't worked and they'd been caught, Smalls and the crew vowed to not be taken alive and instead ignite the explosives aboard the ship. By dawn, the planter reached Union territory. Smalls and the crew hastily lowered the ship's Confederate flag and flew a white sheet that Jones had taken from the hotel where she worked. They held their breath as they approached the first Union ship they saw, the Onward. Smalls greeted the Onward's captain by saying, Look at me. Look at me. I am the captain now. 
Actually, no. He said, Good morning, sir. I've brought you some of the old United States' guns, sir. That guy's awesome. Smalls, the crew, and their families had been liberated, and in running off with a Confederate supply ship, they'd done a favor for the Union to boot. The 16 people aboard the planner were now free from their Confederate enslavers for the first time in their lives. The story of the planter was a sensation throughout the North, and Smalls was a national hero. Not only had he delivered his crew to safety and returned enemy artillery to the Navy, he, like many who escaped slavery during the war, was a key source of military intelligence, giving the Union information about troop movements, fortifications, and mines in Charleston Harbor. He became a ship pilot for the Union, during which time he was commissioned as a second lieutenant and fought in 17 battles. At one point, the planter was under fire, and the ship's captain fled to hide in the coal bunker. Smalls took command, refusing to surrender, and steered the ship to safety. He was promoted to acting captain of the ship. Later, he was designated a major general in the South Carolina militia. With his help, the U.S. Navy was able to retake Coles Island, the planter's home port just south of Charleston, for the remainder of the war. Smalls also lobbied Abraham Lincoln to allow African Americans into the Union Army and succeeded where Generals Fremont and Sherman had previously failed. After the war, Smalls returned to Charleston, buying his former master's house, <laughs> love that, which had been seized for refusal to pay taxes. The house's previous owner sued, but Smalls won, setting an important post-war legal precedent. Smalls also bought a building that he turned into a school for black children and learned to read and write himself. He co-owned a store that primarily served freed men, a newspaper, and a horse-drawn railway line that ran to the Charleston docks. Not done there, Small served in South Carolina's House of Representatives and Senate before serving as a representative at the national level when in 1874 he was elected to the United States Congress for two terms, lost a re-election bid, then won a seat back in 1882, and remained for three more terms. This is 1800 South Carolina, making him the second longest-serving African-American in Congress until well into the 20th century. This dude is ridiculous. From humble beginnings working as a slave on a plantation to becoming a slave pirate who sailed his family to freedom aboard an enemy ship and then wrapped up his incredible life by serving his country yet again, this time in the halls of America's top legislative body, Robert Smalls is a reminder that hope does float, especially if it's aboard a pirated Confederate ship. <laughs>